Uh, we're joined now by Sean, uh, Sean Grady and Mike Young of EA here to talk a little bit about Madden. I, I, wanna, I gotta jump right into the beginning of this nope. because I was in the room for the EA press conference and when it came up, the thing that I immediately latched onto when the, EA, when the Madden trailer started was university teams. And I was a big fan of the NCAA franchise uh, when, it, it, when EA was producing that. So can you talk to me a little bit about, uh, that, about that? You know, what's going on with the story yeah, yeah. there? Yeah. <laughs> So we have a story mode. Right. Uh, it's our first story mode in the 29-year history of Madden. Really excited about it. It's a very emotional journey. It's an origin story of a character named Devin Wade, who we pick up the story at the regional combine, the NFL regional combine, and him and his best friend are trying to make the NFL. Um, and it ends at the draft. So our story is about can these two guys get drafted? Um, it's a playable story. It's a lot like a campaign mode. Mm -hmm. And a big part of the story is that Devin Wade – was a Texas Longhorn. So it adds that credibility. Um, you know, a Texas kid being a five-star quarterback. Right, big football state. If we had a fake university or college, um, I, don't, I don't think the Madden audience would have accepted as much as, oh, he's a Longhorn, that means something. Right. That's mm -hmm. Vince Young territory, that's Colt McCoy territory. Yeah. Um, you knew what it took for him to get to that level. Um, and it makes you believe that Devin Wade can get to the NFL if he was that good. Yeah. But if it was fake Texas U, it wouldn't be as credible. As a Longhorn fan, I'm from Austin. Oh, yeah. It pains me that you have to mention people from a decade ago. <laughs> 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 when you list off, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. It's, uh, it's been a tough couple it's of years for the Longhorns. Years but yeah. we appreciate the shout out yeah. in yeah. your trailer. That was great. Especially the franchise as storied as Madden is. Yeah. Well, when it comes to like adding a single player campaign to a game like Madden, what does that mean? What can we expect to do in this campaign? What's, it's, what's really cool is we, we made it for our hardcore gamers, but we also made it for a more casual audience that loves football, loves the NFL, just loves story. So you're going to see telltale style dialogue choices. You're going to see football set pieces that are like quick time events. You're going to have core Madden, uh, but there's a nice ramp to it. At the beginning, you're playing like a high school football game with no play calling. So it's way less intimidating to come in uh, to this experience if you haven't played Madden for a few years uh, because you come into it for the story and we make it easy if you're a gamer and that it's pretty simplified in that you're not you know you can't interact with this unless you're like a NFL head coach and knowing mm -hmm. the entire office of playbook yes. of the Dallas yeah. Cowboys yeah. Yeah. and what's really neat is Devin's journeys from a spread quarterback in college uh -huh. so trying to get to the NFL so through the story you're actually learning there's actually some moments where you're in a classroom actually being grilled about, you know, footage of plays and having to kind of read defenses and learn what play calling is. But it's all interactive and your choices matter. You are going to decide whether Devin Wade and Colt Cruz make it to the NFL. You know what this sounds like? It sounds like a great entry point for people who now, you know, EA being a global company mm -hmm. is people who live in countries where American football is not popular. It sounds, it sounds like this is a great entry point for the people to come in and almost get like a football primer. Yeah, Absolutely. I, yeah. I was gonna say, as, as we've shown this within the company, at meetings, you know, promoting what it is, a lot of our European counterparts always say, you know, I don't really get American football, the rules are kind of complex, but I'd play this. Right. And I like a good story, and like Mike said, it's gonna teach them a little bit about American football rules along the way, to the point where they don't even really know that they're learning about it. Yeah. Pick up on it. And you know, like a lot of, uh, People love shows like Friday Night Lights. They weren't necessarily football fans, but they just love great story. And there's an authenticity to that town. Our, that's the tone we're in. That's the type of storytelling we're doing. Uh, in fact, one of our main characters is played by Jason Street, uh, Scott Porter. Mm -hmm. uh, so we feel like this is a movie quality experience. If you'll come for the story. You'll learn a little football. Um, but it's just a great football story with an amazing cast. We have Academy Award winner Mahershala Ali in this. Wow. We have Dan Marino playing himself. Really? Uh, <laughs> just really cool. You old guys know that name. You know, we all <laughs> yeah. I was going to make an Isotoner's glove joke, but that really, really <laughs> dated me. Offensive line. Yeah. Yes, I know that reference. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, all right, so can you tell us, I mean, can I ask specific questions? Like, will we be able to, be, uh, will we be able to play co uh, combine events? Will we be able to play at the high school and NCAA level? You will. It's an interactive combine. Okay. So Devin Wade is a quarterback, so you're going to do things that are authentic to a combine for a quarterback, uh, throwing route trees and uh, footwork drills and pocket movement. Um, 
college football is currently part of the storyline, but not necessarily a traditional way to play it. Right. You might have some quick time type things or branching dialogue type moments in there. Uh, it's just such a big part of the authenticity of the story. Mm -hmm. You're playing high school football. You're playing seven on seven, non-tackle football. There's so many unique things built just for this mode. Yeah, it sounds like you're really bringing a totally different gameplay into what is a traditionally pretty football heavy. Yeah, I would guess since it's the football purely title, yes. uh, has the transition into Frostbite being kind of the new engine you guys are using? Has that been was that partially motivated by having to provide these other experiences? I mean, it was critical. Mm -hmm. We yeah. couldn't have done it without it. Right. We started developing the story four years ago. We spent two years just on the script, getting it, you know, movie quality. Mm -hmm. And then without the Frostbite engine, the ambition of the story wouldn't be possible. Uh, it's such amazing content-driven uh, engine, but we go to the small town in and around Austin. Our story is set in a, a we you know, scanned location scouting in Austin. The high school is from around Austin. The Main Street USA feel is from around Austin. So to bring that off the field world to life, we could not have done it without Frostbite. The ridiculous traffic on the freeways. <laughs> it's also authentic. We simulate that. Yes. Well, there was something I read that really excited me for the gameplay mechanics of this version of Madden. And I'm going to read off of here. Uh, I read that it's a new passing mechanic. You hold left trigger or L2, and an indicator pops up uh, for your primary receiver. You can move the indicator around so your QB can throw a, a lead on a pass, so Correct. you can lead a receiver. Yep. Can you talk a little bit about that? I can. I'll, first, I'll tell you that you actually get a little bit of a mini training experience inside a long shot. There's a mm -hmm. mechanic you use that's going to feel very similar. It's not exactly the same, but it's like a nice onboarding to this mechanic. Uh, you described it perfectly. That's exactly how it works. It's meant to allow you to pinpoint a very specific spot on the field that you want to yeah. throw to, like the back corner of an end zone, a sideline route when you're trying to manage the clock or something like that. I've described it, described it a couple times as a skill mechanic. It's a skill gap mechanic, meaning it's one that you're going to want to lab with. You don't just pick it up and immediately you figure out how to do it. You're, you might throw a pick or two when you first start to use it. But I think over time, our most elite players, which we have quite a bit of competitive gaming going on starting uh, from last year, are going to really figure out when and where to use this mechanic and separate themselves from, from other players. Yeah, I'm so excited about that. If you, for those of you who listen to the podcast, you know that I've talked about a game I used to play in arcades. It was uh, John Elway's quarterback. And they had a separate spring-loaded joystick for the quarterback for the passing, one for movement and one for passing. And it was, you know, it's a very difficult skill to be able to move the quarterback to, or stay in the pocket, mm -hmm. you know, stay protected, and yeah. still then lead the receiver. So I can't wait to see what especially some of the top Madden players mm -hmm. do with that. Yeah. That'll be amazing. That's an interesting reference because one of the risk rewards with this mechanic is you're using the left stick, which is what you usually use to navigate your QB. Yeah. You're giving that up. So yeah. you're, you're kind of sitting in the pocket, you know, potentially unprotected. You got to get rid of the ball pretty quickly. You're not moving it at the same time. So the outside linebacker comes to <laughs> yeah, the exactly. side, and blows gets you up. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I was about to ask because that's got to be a huge mechanic change. Whenever you're playing with uh, that split second frequently as the quarterback to throw the ball, anything yeah. that you add that changes the complexity of what that interaction is like has yeah. got to be scary to manipulate. That's why I say you got to lab with it, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, you actually, at the start of the play, you've got a hot route that's identified by a color when you go into your coach cam. That's the guy that is going to have the target passing icon on it first, but in pre-play, you can navigate to somebody else because you do want to know ahead of the play kind of who you're targeting first. You're not locked onto that guy, uh, but it's better to at least have a, a first read, if you will, mm -hmm. before you use this mechanic. Yeah, it's funny, you were making uh, jokes earlier about, like, references to Dan Marino and things like that, but... I mean, one of the things that's very unique to this franchise is, as far as I know, it's the only EA sports franchise that is not named after the sport. It's named after, it's a legacy name with Madden. Mm -hmm. And I wonder how many of your players in your community are even aware of John Madden and his <laughs> influence over the game. Yeah, we, we actually talk about this a lot. I have a 10-year-old son, and he asked me one day, who is Madden? <laughs> what is Madden? I'm like, he's like one of the greatest coaches of all time, won yeah. a Super Bowl. He's certainly one of the greatest broadcasters of all yeah. time. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's also the namesake of our, our video, and a generation has just grown up with that name as a football, authentic NFL football game. That's what it means, Madden. Yeah, that's means, what it means. Yeah, yeah, the premier football game yeah. on the console. Yeah, absolutely. What else can we expect to see from this new version? I mean, you guys are so deep into the, 
the history of this game at this point. And I, yeah. you know, I, I, it's like any other great art. It's you're never done with it. Right. Uh, yeah. So each iter new iteration, you get a chance to tweak a few more things. Or is there anything else you guys are really excited about? People getting their hands on with this title? Yeah, 29 years consecutively this summer it's coming out, which just blows my mind whenever I get really? to say that. 29 consecutive years. What video game wouldn't want to say that they've come out for 29 consecutive years? I mean, honestly, uh, there's there's probably three television shows in the history of television that lasted 29 seasons. Exactly. If so, that, yeah. I mean, we got a lot of passionate fans that show up every year uh, that just love the sport, love the game. Um, probably the thing that our core fans, those guys that do show up every year are most excited about is squads. It's the return of online team play. We had it on the floor at EA Play. It's three versus three human controlled players inside of Ultimate Team. You're merging your Ultimate Team lineups together so you can play as a head coach, offensive coordinator, or defensive coordinator, and based on which role you provide, you're bringing in some portion of your, your lineup. It was a, a runaway hit at EA Play. You had people you know, hooting and hollering, I'm wide open, give, give me the ball, you know, which is exactly what we want. Very social, fun gaming experience. Everyone's all Always open. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, absolutely. And if they Everybody's to yeah. and you know they're, they're, oh the my. defense is nowhere to be seen as long as I'm the one controlling the exactly. receiver. Yeah. Absolutely, I'll break yeah. away from this guy who's all over me at the, at the moment. <laughs> yeah, uh, and, and within that, there's also some new gameplay mechanics as well that you can use outside of team play. But one of the reasons why we wanted to wait to bring it back is we wanted to give you more things to do than just I'm the quarterback or mm -hmm. I'm running the ball. So you can uh, have a little bit of a battle at the line of scrimmage if you're a defensive mm -hmm. back or a wide receiver. You can block really effectively now. We fine-tune the, fine the tackling mechanic a bit. So there's some things you can do outside of just being the quarterback that we think makes it really fun. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a obviously a sport, real-world sport that people are very passionate about. It's a, a digital franchise that people are super passionate about. So to work on it year after year, it must be challenging. To What do you keep and what do you add and what do you kind of like let, you know, drift away from the franchise? Yeah, it's been a hard one because I think we've gotten better in the last couple of years of keeping things in the game. When uh, myself and, and uh, our, our former EP, who's the GM of our studio now, came on in Madden 13, we had to let go of some things that just were, weren't kind of up to the quality bar that we've wanted. But in the last five years or so, we've, we've really only just kind of grown what, what's in the game. And now with our first ever story mode experience and team play back, it's, it's kind of right where we, we, we want to be. Does the working with new consoles now with Scorpio and the PS Pro, does that open up things that you guys have wanted to try for years and haven't been able to do? Uh, certainly it makes the game look fantastic. Right. We've got the build on the floor with Microsoft right now. We've got three kits of the Xbox One X, as I'm getting used to saying now. Congratulations on I saying the correct <laughs> name. That was yeah. great. <laughs> been practicing. Uh, but yeah, it, it just looks great, and the PS4 Pro looks great as well. So yeah, it just and of course with the Frostbite engine, it, it's just a fantastic looking football product. You know, it's funny too. It's like you look at the time of you know in the calendar that uh, Madden has spanned now the franchise, and we talk about 29 years. There's a lot of things I don't think people realize the Madden franchise has given to the video game industry as a whole. You know, with tournaments, you were some of the first tournaments where people were being you know professionally lifted up to show how good these game players were you know even things like instant replays in video games or yes. cammable instant replays yep. like those were born in the madden franchise yep. we, we've actually influenced the nfl um yeah a lot of the cameras they made like the wire cam were influenced by madden yeah they, they, they're they competing the, the uh <laughs> a, a kind of famous story at least within our circles was the timeout ticker on the on the scoreboard where it shows you the three dots uh -huh. that uh you know teams have for timeouts that came from our game and like a fox producer was watching his son play the game one day and got the idea to put it in the ticker in a regular broadcast as well that's really interesting because so, madden was a fox broadcaster exactly. madden yeah. Was, so, <laughs> yeah. it's all it's all circular in yeah. a weird way now you guys kind of touched on this briefly a second ago so you said 3v3 online play yep what other multiplayer modes are available is there going to be local Multiplayer available as well, or is it purely online? Yeah, no, we've had that for a while now. Mm -hmm. You've got 3v3 local multiplayer as well, so catch plates. Uh, because you're on the same camera, not always th the best experience. I think this th 3v3 online is going to uh, really take it to the next level. But all the ones that we've had for the, the last couple of years will be there as, as well. Do you guys find there's much crossover? You know, a lot of the criticism of esports, where it's not really criticism of people who don't understand it, it often comes from the sports world, like ESPN sports commentators saying, you know, can you believe people watch other people play a video game? When those guys are commenting on people playing a, a <laughs> sport, a game that anyone could play if they wanted to, theoretically. Uh, do you find that there's a crossover between people who watch real world sports and then will watch the esports versions of, of those? Uh, same sports on, yeah. online? I, I think we're getting it because our, our fans at the end of the day are NFL fans, so they're probably following their team, they're going to the game, they're watching those games, they're going to sports bars and watching the game, and, and if they're very into the Madden product, they want to see how the best players play. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, it's entertainment. You want to mm -hmm. watch entertainment. If you like sports, this is a different way to engage with a, a, a sport you love. And I mean, last year we had um, 
a million dollars in payout across our four majors. Um, our number one player, you know, uh, just earned about one hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. Wow! Through the That's course fantastic. of one year play, playing the game, yeah. um, and our fans are showing up and watching it online and watching it at local events. So if you're entertained by it, it's you know, it's it's. Our fans want to be there. They want to watch it. They want right. to partake in it. Yeah. Absolutely. So I got to know though. So okay, we got it. You've now that you've tacked on the single player experience, yeah. we're going to follow Devin through his journey. Can I still make a custom player and take him onto a team and actually keep him? Absolutely. All that custom team yep. stuff is still there, and yep. I can. Or is there any yeah, kind of integration there? You get out of hand your custom players. You're going to make somebody who's oh, like no, two I'll feet tall. I'll keep it very <laughs> legitimate. He yeah. won't be a nine foot Goliath that can throw four <laughs> on a you know pinpoint. He'll have a warhammer <laughs> as a lineman. You know, one of my, I, I, I play the game, uh, I think, more differently than anyone else I've ever met, uh, where one of my favorite things to do is in the offseason, load up Madden and just let it run a game and just have it on in the background or something. So I, there's some iterations of the game where you can't do that, where you can't have no players playing. But I, it's one of those things that's just like, I just like it, you know, to have it on in the background, hear the cheering and everything else. I've got a story cool. for you around that. So... Uh, Little Wayne, I'm pretty sure he's the one that tweeted this out, used to do that very thing where he would set up two teams to run against the CPU, and him and his buddy in the studio would make $10,000 bets oh, on right. what team was going to win the game. And apparently they did this multiple times. <laughs> yeah. So that's taking it to the next level. Yeah, that's, I didn't do that. Yeah, I wasn't at the Little yeah. Wayne level, yeah. you know. I was, I'm sure I'm going to be making $10,000 bets on our CPU playing each other. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a great Madden story. Maybe you guys can get a commission on that or yeah. something. Yeah. We got a we got a hard-hitting question here from okay. Twitter. Uh, Joshua Pallarone asks, Hey, what are you going to call Madden in the year 2025? Because you've already got a Madden 25. <laughs> That's tough. That is Ooh. a tough one. Maybe it is Madden 2025 <laughs> at that point. Instead of 25, it's Madden 2025. That's, that's a tough question. I think you guys Luckily are the most consistent of any video game franchise. I mean, we have XCOM 2, Battlefront 2. Uh -huh. There's like five Battlefront 2s. You know, it's right. just like, what are you going to do? Call of Duty World War 2? Now it's like, right. you know, repeatable names are no big deal. I like the implication, though, that he's, he's, this guy's pretty confident. You'll still be around in 2025. <laughs> I like which, that, too. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you've been going this long. Uh, I don't see, like... You guys stopping anytime soon. I'd like to believe we're still going to be there in 2025. Oh, no. <laughs> but we got time to figure that one out, which is yeah. good. <laughs> do you have a wish list for, I mean, this is with a yearly iteration of a game. Do you, is yeah. there things on your list that like, all right, I'm next year. This is what's going to happen. Oh, that list is long. We're always <laughs> like, you know, have a, a backlog of ideas from the community, from ourselves, our own personal passion projects. I think, you know, by 2025, I can't wait to see where we're at with this product and the game industry in general. But, um, yeah. I mean, there, there's no shortage of ideas. It's funny. You, I talk to some people outside of the industry, and they're like, you know, it's football, and it doesn't change year to year. Like, how can you keep coming up with a game for 29 years? Like, how do you have new features? And like, there's, there's no shortage of ideas, no shortage of new things we want to do, certainly no shortage of things that our fans want us to do. Uh, so it'll keep us busy through 2025 and beyond, I think, <laughs> at yeah. the end of the day. It's every, it seems like a very passionate group of people. It's like if you're working on Madden, it seems like a bunch of NFL fans that would work on the game. Is that mm -hmm. accurate? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Fans of the game, fans of the sport. Um, and now fans have grown up playing Madden for 29 <laughs> yeah. years, right? Yeah. And they're working yeah. on the yeah. franchise. Former players. I mean, we've got a guy who played for the Patriots, played for the Redskins. He's a former offensive lineman, which we're always told are the smartest guys in the NFL. Yeah. Uh, he's obviously the biggest guy in the room when he walks in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. We have a former college quarterback from the University of Florida. We've mm -hmm. got a, a guy who played, I think, an offensive lineman um, for a smaller college. Uh, so Wake yeah, Forest. Wake University, Forest. Wake University Forest. of Florida, you said? Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, I'm a Florida State guy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah, go <laughs> what are you going to do? The, uh, yeah, but uh, hopefully you, uh, somewhere on staff you have also have that. There's always that one guy who's a rule savant who knows, mm -hmm. like, oh, that pass was backwards behind the line of scrimmage in a southerly wind, so that was a safety that happened. You know, these really ridiculous things that can come up in any NFL game at any given point. Yeah, we have a guy who is essentially an assistant NFL head coach. He's very connected with, our, with all the coaches around the league, and he knows every playbook. He knows all the rules. Uh, I mean, he, he's incredible. And then we have our college guy as well, right? We have a guy who knows, uh, yeah. a producer on our team, knows every history of every college, every run out that they do, every, every you know, story Love they've it. had. It's, it's amazing. It takes yeah. a lot of experts, yeah. honestly, because of the bar the fans have for how authentic this has to be. There's a guy on our team that his job, and he's a photographic mind for jersey details. Really? True. Oh, wow. Pads that players wear, which face mask. And that stuff's important to everyone. Yes. Not everyone. Some <laughs> yeah, people. Yeah. A but lot, a lot of, of our fans think that's so important. So if you get one of those face masks wrong on your favorite player, that's the right. whole game's terrible to you. Yeah. And 
I think that's the coolest part about our team is there's so much passion and so many departments need that expert who is the bearer of quality for our game. Well, when can players get their hands on the new Madden? If you do the GOAT edition, the greatest of all time, you can argue whether or not Tom Brady is that, but he's our cover guy. We have a GOAT edition. Uh, you can pre-order it, get an early release on August 22nd on a Tuesday, and the worldwide release will come out on Friday, August 25th. Fantastic.